What's up, family? Get a news report. Man, that's twenty minutes. The lead today is I'm gonna call it Wonderful Wednesday because what a wonderful world this could be. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> September the twenty eighth, twenty twenty two. You know, I gained strength in this room, and it's something about this room. It's kind of magical. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, Chicago is where I'm from. America, I love you. For real, for real. You know, and all my real Americans. And even if you have a real hybrid, you understand what I'm saying? Like an African American, Chinese American. You know, all Asian American. You the Bible to First Chronicles chapter chapters 15 and 16 but I'm going to go with 14, 15, 16 and 17 now I wrote, this is what I write in, ooh, it got musical right there this is this is real good, God thank you my higher power for real um, it says I did thank you one and all now, one thing about me, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a hater, okay? I love music. Someone introduced me to some vinyls, records, back in the day, my foster mother, Betty Jean Redman, because they said music sues the savage beast. And when you're going through a whole lot of stuff, you know, God's people, my higher power, for real, for real, you know, put music in the world like the birds, you know, twee -lee -lee, you understand what I'm saying? It's to, you know, give you something to appreciate first and foremost, and to um, um, take notice of. But the devil, on the other hand, was in control of the music, they said. God kicked him out of heaven, and he took a third of the angels with him. And, you know, they trying to get the rest, I guess. Now, I grew up listening to music and putting my words in place of other people's words, you know what I'm saying, telling my story. Now, you may say that's whatever, but that's how I became the originator of rap music at the age of eight in 1975, right there on 1335 East 75th Street, second floor. 75th and Kenwood, in my city, Chicago. That is a historical building, just like this building, 6210 South Ken Park Avenue, Chicago North, 60637. It's a historical building. This room is priceless. I'm priceless, you priceless. And, you know, people who really put their heart and soul into something, you know, that's, that's priceless. You can't put a price on real love. You can buy a vagina. You can buy a penis. You know what I'm saying? You can buy this, you can buy that. But that's not love. You know, Mary J. Blige talked about real love, you know, and a lot of people wanted that. And I'm glad I did have that growing up with a ex-girlfriend of mine, LaWanda Joy Jacobs, until she wanted fame. And this is where the Bible scripture, First Chronicles, chapter 14 and 17, comes in at. It says, and the fame of David went out into all lands, and the Lord brought the fear of him upon what? All nations. You see? You know, fame is a drug, and it's a it's more addictive than drugs, alcohol, sex, gambling, and all that. And now that we all have cellular phones, you know, everybody wants likes and all kind of things of that nature. You know, K. Reno got a song about that I'll put in the description of this video. Whereas myself... I'm here on earth to save the babies, the children, even you, all who are addicted to yourselves and fame. And, you know, Martin Luther King said back in the day, them cameras going to come back to hunt y'all one day. I hope this is the day y'all um, realize I don't want it to haunt you. I just want you to be aware of, uh, you know, the predators that are still out here looking at you all and thinking crazy thoughts or whatever and stuff. But not only that, if you have phones, you can see what's going on. Use it to the good. This is a gift. 
Okay, a gift is from God and surprise to kill you. Okay, now you got to be aware of your surroundings. I am not saying be, be paranoid, but I'm saying you have to be aware. To be aware is to be alive. And the police, they're not out to always help you. So you have to be aware of them also because just yesterday they tried to, you know, capture me on some sneak stuff. And I was able to, you know, go right by them and stuff. Now, had I turned around and got scared, I would have looked guilty. But I knew I wasn't guilty of anything. So I was like, I'm going towards you for real because I know I'm innocent. And, you know, I just so happened to, you know, be recording this stuff for real. And I called them as always, like I did before, you know, when I was at an AA meeting and they said I was trespassing where I was not. And they took me in forcefully. Said that's not going to happen this time. I need my real Mary McNamara's, whether you're black, white, colored, native, not a native. You understand what I'm saying? If you're a real person that's tired of being sick and tired, like Fannie Lou Hamer, and you know we are going down and not up. See, music, I'm talking about music, something I really love. My first love, besides my, well, my second love, besides my higher power. You know, music is supposed to inspire, like Lauren Hill say. But, you know, how come we are not getting any higher? Because they put that spin on it. They got Eminem, you know, controlling y'all minds and stuff. And y'all scared of white people for some reason. I don't know when. You know, we helped them. They learned everything from us. Remember that. We're the originals, okay? We cannot be... We're all originals. Let's put it like that, okay? But, you know, I'm the originator of rap music. But I was inspired, you understand what I'm saying, from word of mouth. Because rap ain't nothing but talking, okay? That's all it is, all right? Now, you got to ask yourself, why are they killing so many rappers, you understand what I'm saying? Because they hate us because they know we outdid ourselves. And they know it's a lady behind this, which is me, Merrily, the ghetto news reporter and originator of rap music since the age of 8, 1975. Now, let's talk about it, okay? To thy own self be true. If you was dying today, would you want to die doing me or doing you? If you had the chance to tell the truth and get into heaven, would you lie and say you did not come up off of me? Or I didn't inspire you? Or would you continue to tell a lie to my higher power? Because you got to get past my higher power for real to get into heaven. I'm going to be right there talking about you better tell the truth. This is your last time for real. And Or, you know, would you lie and go, go to hell forever? Because Mary J. Blige, you know, you know, I did my child abuse rap, I believe, at Forest City or Evergreen Plaza in my city, Chicago. They had like a studio. And I went in there and I paid a couple of dollars and I spit, you know, spat my um, child abuse rap in the booth a cappella And they gave me a cassette tape, real talk. And then they said Mary J. Blige uh, was noticed at a, a mall, you know, singing or whatever. Now, I don't mind people imitating me as long as you... Give back what was so freely given to you. And that was a gift to get you out of the projects or whatever the case. See, if you tell a lie long enough, it will become the truth. But if the truth spotted, you understand what I'm saying? For real, for real. Okay, now, well, since I've been in this building, the only reason why I'm coming at you, for real, because it used to be a, um, a, a party down the street from where I'm residing called the 411 Club. And everybody knows I'm not lying. It was like a little gay club. And lesbians used to go there and we party and we have fun. The 411 Club, Mary J. Blige, I believe her first album was the 411. What's the 411? You understand? Nothing happens in this world by mistake. Now, I serenaded my ex girlfriend, Luana Joy Jacobs, at that club. You know, yeah, I did a little show or whatever to the song Royce Royce. Uh, let me think. I'm, 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 I'm Spinning, my wheels are spinning. You have to excuse me. I'm on a lot of pressure. Uh, I know she's going to kill me for this. One, but uh, uh, I'm sorry, baby. I cannot remember. I ain't going to lie. You know, it's kind of like trying to remember a person to add a, your anniversary and stuff. Uh, uh, I'll put it in description. Or did it come to me? I got to keep going. But anyway, I serenaded her to Roy's Royce song. You understand what I'm saying? Uh Oh, I, I'm sorry, you know, my mind. But anyway, 
I'm getting older. I was born May 25th, 1967, you know, and I'm under a lot of pressure, so you have to excuse me. And just thinking about her, you know, it makes me wonder, you know, if she really cared or not. So I guess God ain't trying to, you know what I'm saying, bring it out. But anyway, I flipped the Bible to First Chronicles chapters 15 and 16. And this is on page 411. You understand what I'm saying? Real tough. Um, it says right here, it says, don't touch me. Now, right here, uh, First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 22, it says, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Now, you see right here, uh, chapter 16, First Chronicles, uh, verse 4, it says, And he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord and to record and to thank and praise the Lord God of Israel. See, record and record is the same. You understand what I'm saying? I'm talking about music. You know, the first beat you're going to hear is the heartbeat of your mother when she puts you on, or your father puts you with your mother first, okay? Put you on her chest. That's the heartbeat. That's the drum. That's music. You know, your mother sing to you when you cry. I mean, just think of that baby and then think of yourself as a little person. And then think of me as a small, big person. See, I'm still that little baby on the inside, but I've grown up and people don't see that I'm still fighting for myself. And that's all we are all doing, fighting for ourselves. But we don't know how to communicate. We don't know how to rap. And that's why God gave us rap. Because it's just like talking. Express yourself. I'm expressing with my full capabilities. <laughs> now I'm living in correctional facilities. <laughs> we shouldn't have to get locked up for freedom of speech. Something that a high power gave us. So, you know, open up your mouth. Because closed mouths don't get fed. You understand what I'm saying? I'm still trying to think of that song. I ain't gonna lie. You understand what I'm saying? For real. I know y'all know it. You're a real Mary McAmara. And if my ex-girlfriend, Lawanda Joy Jacobs, would listen to this. Look, I know you wanted, you know, to be famous or whatever the case, and you took the bait or whatever and stuff, and, you know, you thought I was washed up, but nothing happens in this world by mistake. And I also talk about music over here. Uh, what did it say? I would talk about leaders right here on verse chapter 13. You understand? And David consulted with the captains of thousands and hundreds and with every leader. That's what I need people to do. I need y'all to, you know, get with the leaders. If you're a game banger or whatever you is, a boy scout, girl scout leader, you understand what I'm saying? Neighborhood watch leader. You know, we have to come together and stop being, um, um, they talk about daughters right here. And David took more wives at Jerusalem and David begat more sons and daughters. So you can't leave me and talk about masons. You can't leave me up out of it. You understand what I'm saying? I am a daughter. I'm somebody's daughter. You can't be beating up on me. You know, thinking I want to be a man. I don't want to be a man, okay? I want to be myself. Why do you make it so hard for me? On um, chapter 16, verse 42, talk about the musical. And with them he man and Jethner with trumpets and cymbals for those that shall make a sound and with musical instruments of God and the sons of Jedathon. We're porters, okay? We're talking about music. Real love. Soothe the savage beast, not increase, you know, all this demonic spirit that's happening. Halloween is coming. We don't. We got to be careful, okay? It says something, I promise to never make you blue. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to save your life for real because a promise is a promise is a promise, okay? I promise to not make you blue, which means I'm not trying to kill you. So stop trying to kill me. All my Mary McAmara fans, uh, Eminem fans, Mary J. Blige fans, because I got beat up on Mary J. Blige's birthday since I've been in this trap building. I ain't think that was cute. You understand what I'm saying? Real talk. They try to bust me in the head with a, a, a liquor bottle, 40 bottle, 40 ounce. 
real talk. This video going to keep going, and I'm going to see if it go through. For real. See, no test, no testimony. You know, look, I can't be a victim for everybody and a survivor for myself. You understand what I'm saying? How I'm going to live. Put some respect on my name, real talk. You understand what I'm saying? You know what I do. Everybody can wear the crown. Go to Burger King. They used to have them crowns you could put on your head or whatever and stuff. You know what I'm saying? You, everybody could be a king or a queen. Why well, choose to be a, a problem? We got enough problems. The world is tornadoes, all kind of, you know what I'm saying? I told them it was going to take everybody for me to come out. That's what I told them. I'm going to break this here, see what happened. If it don't go through, it's because the truth hurts. You understand what I'm saying? But it don't have to. It don't have to hurt. It might hurt your feelings. But I ain't got, look, sticks and stone may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Yeah, words do hurt, but, you know, you get past that. It's not a physical, it's a mental. You understand what I'm saying? Now, of course, you know, I'm number one, you number one. You go to six. I was in the Chicago Sun-Times newspaper at the age of six in 1973. Became the originator of rap in 1975. You go to 12. Jesus had 12 disciples, right? That's what they said. Now, everybody a disciple or apostle, whatever you want to call it. So 12 and 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. They try to take 19 years of sobriety from me, but uh, I'm still sober. Christmas is my um, sobriety. I don't drink drugs, smoke, or fornicate. So for my ex-girlfriends and family who thought I was a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit, a whole lot of you. I'm a real motherfucker. I'm just like that baby. I'm pure until somebody do something wrong to that baby. That's how we all was. We were all perfect. And now people 